Today we're going to talk about using a new tool in SOLIDWORKS to apply 3D textures to your parts using 3D printing with Stratasys FDM. 3D printed textures make parts look more realistic and make them more interesting to the touch. They hide layer lines and with FDM printing they can even wrap around corners. The first step in our general workflow is to model a part in SOLIDWORKS. We'll then use the split line command to isolate the areas or faces of the part where we want and don't want the 3D bumps. In this case, we're going to apply 2D textures to those split faces as shown here in the black and white image. Then, still staying in SOLIDWORKS, we use the new 3D texture command to actually do the displacement mapping, which is also sometimes called bump mapping. Next, we take the file as an STL into GrabCAD print and lay it out on the tray so we can print it. Let's use this section of a car's dashboard as inspiration for the part we're going to print in this example. We start by creating a similar model in SOLIDWORKS. Right away we need to address the problem that this entire top surface is one face. If we apply a texture it would go everywhere. In most cases, we won't want a bumpy 3D texture on the entire surface, especially where it goes into holes that mate surface tabs. So, using the software, we make a circle around this through hole. Using the Insert Curve Split Line command, we carve out two separate faces that are separately selectable. Note that it didn't change any other geometry on the part, but simply split the faces. Doing the same to the rest of the model, we have three safe zones. We'll apply 2D texture to everywhere shown in gray, and the blue areas will remain untouched. The command for that is Edit Appearance. Here on the right side, when you go to Miscellaneous, the 2019 commercial version of SOLIDWORKS includes a new choice for 3D textures. The choice will also be available soon in the 2019-2020 educational version. Grab the bubble as shown here and apply it to the faces you want to texture by clicking on them one at a time. This example shows axis mapping, which doesn't look like the best pattern choice for this. So we go to the mapping tool and choose box style mapping. That looks better. You can try different mapping styles to get the look you want. You can also change the size. So let's make ours a little smaller to get the look we want. So here we have a two-dimensional black and white texture mapped on just the faces we want. If you ever miss a spot, it's easy to go back in and add the texture to the area you missed. Now we're going to use the new command to add 3D texture. Go to Insert Features 3D Texture. Let's texturize the body. Then if desired, you can adjust individual faces. Let's use this slider to set an 83% refinement. You can see in the model how the adjustments can make the bubbles more defined. Note that the higher the refinement, the bigger your file size for the STL you're going to export. Typically, 85 to 90% refinement produces a manageable file size. For today's purpose, let's select all phases and do a little time lapse. With all the faces selected using 88.9% refinement, you can see the bubbles are well defined. They respect the safe zone so that the edges of the mating surfaces and holes are not textured. So with the mesh body and triangles, this model looks like it's ready to be turned into an STL. But there's still one more step. Go to Body on the top left of the screen and select Convert to Mesh Body. This controls how fine the output from the SOLIDWORKS graphics to the physical shape is going to be. You can make more adjustments, keeping in mind again that the amount of refinement affects the final file size. For this example, we'll leave our settings untouched. Go to Save As and save the file as an STL. Hopefully our file won't be too large. Looks like 56 megabytes. The thousands of triangles that define all those bubbles ensured it would be a big file even though it's a tiny part. Files can easily top 100 megabytes. A tip from Stratasys engineers is that bubbles on vertical faces print better. Let's arrange the parts on a tray in GrabCAD print in different orientations to take a look. Twelve hours later, these parts have been printed on a Stratasys F370. As advised, the bubbles on the vertical faces look great, and the rest don't look good at all. So what's going on? Why do the textures look so poor on the horizontal surfaces but look great on the vertical surfaces? 
It helps to understand that FDM parts are laid down bead by bead in the Z direction, and layer height becomes one of the key factors on how fine your part is. It's easy to think that the horizontal versus vertical issue is because you have a fixed layer height, so maybe you could fix it if you had subtle changes in the X and Y and the head had more resolution. But there's a bigger thing going on with the Z height. Think about a texture like this bow tie, a standard texture in SolidWorks. This bow tie is 200 thousandths of an inch wide, but only 20 thousandths of an inch tall. That means at 10 thousandths of an inch layer height, only two beads are used to make the shape. So as this photo shows, if you print it horizontally, you can see the actual beads. But if you print this bow tie vertically, this shape is now 200 thousandths of an inch tall. So it can have 10 or more Z layers, so it prints with 10 beads rather than just the two when printing horizontally. Each layer only has to make a subtle change in the X and Y. So let's print the bow tie texture again, printing some at different angles. Can you tell which is which? Here's the vertical one, which is the best. You can barely see any layer lines. What you mainly see is interference patterns in the light. Here's one at a 45 degree angle, and it came out pretty decent. You can start to see some layers. On the flat one though, you can clearly see those two layers. If you slice it in grab CAD print and look at the slice view, you can actually see this happening between the 45 degree and the horizontal prints. That means you can catch the problem before you print. So what are we going to do? Some face has to be printed horizontally. One cheat is to cut a face off the part and glue it on later to make the part a two-sided body. For this example, we use a hexagon texture in SolidWorks and a 3D texture command. Then put it on a tray so no textured faces are horizontal. It printed very well. Here, we're printing the car part with another curvy part. The hexagon texture makes this part look more complex and realistic, and the texturing wraps well around the corner. You can see that safe areas are protected, so if this part had to fit into any kind of assembly, it would work fine. We also printed off this curvy piece just to show how complex parts could be. We can make this part bend and curve any direction and still have this texture on it. So that's the power of SolidWorks plus 3D printing. You can make these textures applied to anything you can draw in SolidWorks and print on your Stratasys 3D printer. If you're interested in learning more, exploring the technology, or exploring a benchmark part, Talk to your local Stratasys partner about opportunities to do more with the F123 series.